Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. Today we're gonna talk about another peripheral that's found inside your microcontroller. Uh, this is gonna be probably a lead up to another bigger project that I'm gonna do. And I'm kind of going into audio right now and uh, I'm looking around DACs and other conversion methods. And I would like to see how to take audio as a sample file and play back to a, a deck. So this is a digital to analog converter. So for a starter to see how to write those functions, how to handle audio stream and data, maybe USB, I'm gonna uh, start with DSC on the board. And here we can see I have my IDE opened with my sample code. It's not the usual one where I have multiple uh, functions for each setup, but I only have a basic uh, main file and I'm going to add everything that's necessary in before the infinite while loop. I also have the delay function currently set as a millis function and the cystic handler. And all the four onboard LEDs are initialized over here and that's it. I also have my DAC.C and .h files open up because they're gonna be very useful. So let's start. So this microcontroller has two DICs on board. And uh, if you remember, if you've ever done Arduino, those usually don't have DICs on board because that's a quite a premium peripheral for Arduino. They usually use PWM and you have to use some kind of output filter to uh, change it to the analog voltage. But this one doesn't do that. This one is a 12-bit digital to analog converter, same as the ADC on the board and it takes a digital value from 0 to 4095 and converts it to an analog voltage from 0 to 3 volts, so inverse of what an ADC is doing. So we can use a formula that's somewhere described over here probably. Oh yeah, let's make some room. So we have a formula for the output voltage is the reference voltage, in this case 3.3 volts, times a number from 0 to 4095, divided by the resolution, which is the 12-bit value. And this is giving you the output voltage for the desired bit voltage. But usually you're gonna have a desired output voltage, and you'll have to know this number over here. So you can take this equation and turn it around and get this number with the desired 0.7 volts. So we uh, said we're gonna use these two files because they're gonna be very useful, mostly this one. And let's see what it can offer to us. So this is standard peripheral library. It's not HAL, so it's gonna be very low level, but I promise you it's not hard and everything's gonna be understandable. So the first one, we can see that it has two channels and it is because it has two uh, independent, you no know, multiplexers or anything like that. They can uh, work independent or simultaneously dual mode, so you can have like mirrored image, so you can have a differential output, which is very uh, good for uh, noise rejection. And we can see that the channel one is hardwired to PA4, and the next one is on PA5. And maybe if I go to the folder, to my documentation folder, I have all my development boards that I'm working on. And this is the one that I'm using. Here is this. So these are the four LEDs, the accelerometer, the button, the added deck, and this one works in, on I squared S, I think. So in the later episode, maybe we will bring this one to life. It has a microphone and a USB and all this jazz. And here on the PA4 and PA5, we can see in this color DAC. So these are the output pins that we can measure and we'll go later to my oscilloscope and see how it looks. So we can see uh, that it can support triggers, which is very good. It can have, yes, it has a buffer. It has an uh, uh, output uh, amplifier. So it has like a buffer, AKA a follower with like an op amp and it's uh, used to lower the output impedance so you can drive higher loads so you're not loading the physical DAC peripheral. So this one can be enabled and we'll, we'll see that later. It has also two integrated generators for noise and triangle but we're not going to use that. It, the data can be aligned in three ways, 8-bit right or 12-bit left and right. 
we're going to be using the right one as we're using in the analog one. Here's the formula. It can also handle DMA, which is very useful for uh, real-time uh, application when you uh, have to resort the CPU allocations for calculating display management and other stuff like that. And you can have the DMA in the background triggered by some kind of timer that can copy data, aka some kind of sound files, directly into the DAC data register. And here's the best part, how to use this driver. Great. So firstly, you have to enable the clock for the peripheral. Yes. And it gives us the command, which is very awesome. And this peripheral is plugged onto the peripheral bus one. So the APB one and the uh, uh, GPIO is on the AHB bus. Also, it says configure the deck out pins PA4 or 5 in analog mode. And analog mode, uh, it's not only used for analog in, but also for analog out, which makes sense. And this is because you want a very high input impedance and output uh, capability and low output impedance. So the circuitry is not disturbing the incoming analog value or the outgoing analog value from the DAC or the incoming value for the ADC. So that's why you use the analog mode. So the output stage is uh, very uh, sensitive or is not disturbing the analog values. So we have to enable the pin for, so for the, because this is on the APB one, we have to enable the peripheral A. So like this, so GPIO A has to be enabled in order to work so we can configure it. So let's use this part. And this is gonna be GPIO pin. Oh, suggestion is working. Pin four. And it's gonna be analog. And we're just gonna remove this because it's okay from before. Don't forget this. And this is it. So we don't need to do any special alternate function because this is just going to be outputting a value. So it's no alternating function mode. So don't uh, get disturbed by that. So this is all for the GPIO part and clock part. Next is the initialization of the DAC peripheral. So let's scroll down to the DAC init. So this is the function that's going to initialize the peripheral with your uh, you do your settings and these are the settings that exist for the DAC struct in it, which initializes the default values. We're going to need the structure. So let's initialize it like this without the asterisk, because we're not creating a pointer, but we're creating a value. So, oh, I didn't copy all of it. Now this is better. Let's change all these arrows into dot because we're not using a pointer but the structure itself and let this say let's get rid of these comments so we're not gonna get triggered by anything uh, the generation is off because we're gonna do our own and the uh, triangle amplitude we're not caring about that as well because we're not generating it uh, the output buffer let's let's have it enabled and so these are the, all the default. We're gonna leave them here if you will want to change them in the next time. Control and click on it so we can see where it is. So this is if you're using Eclipse as well as me with the AC6, the OpenSTN32 uh, plugins. So the plugin is the one that generates my libraries, the standard peripheral ones and uh, uh, open. And for the debugging, I'm using the uh, J-Link that is FlashGuard. So if you're using this, you can follow like this along. And I think this is the dark team with, uh, I think is the uh, Intelli uh, JetBrains uh, syntax coloring, which is very calming. The one before was yellow, if you remember. Anyway, channel, yes, we're gonna use channel one and the address of the structure is like that. And the next thing is to start the peripheral with the DAC command. So this is gonna start the peripheral. So it's gonna start working from here on. So again, channel one is the one that's gonna be used and the new state is gonna be enabled. Now we just need to write into the data register. If you scroll down, here's all the triggering stuff. It's a set channel one data and this is gonna uh, write into the 
where is it okay uh, it's gonna write into the temp which is the deck base offset and this offset is brought over here you can see it's gonna go into the data register of the DAC so this is gonna write uh, the data that we want from 0 to 4095 so you have to use this function so you can write into that register copy it like that and we're gonna do it in a while loop so you're gonna have some different shapes so the channel 1 data we're gonna have alignment of 12 bit right and the data let's call it i and we're gonna use y as a variable to increment it so let's say we want to have a one hertz triangle pulse so it's gonna go tuck tuck one second tuck tuck one second so we have to increment it and decrement it to do that we're gonna use a for loop and we're gonna use that variable i and have it at zero and let's set it so let's create a 16-bit variable i n k you'll see later why and let's go i is less than 4096 so it's gonna stop at 4095 uh, and we're gonna go i plus plus oops and we're gonna each time set the i value the default value is zero as in the first part and then we're gonna delay now let's calculate the delay uh, it would take roughly four seconds so you're gonna do roughly and I'm gonna do everything so you can see how a quick thinking maybe works so 4000 values and if we delay for one millisecond each pen it will be roughly four seconds to go to the top of the hill but we want to go with one second top and bottom so in order for this it has to be uh, twice as fast and again twice as fast so we have to delay four times faster so but this is already at one millisecond so in order to do that we're gonna switch to microseconds so let's put it this is gonna be 250 microseconds so it's gonna take if you bring out the calculator 250 microseconds times roughly 4000 steps it's gonna be one million microseconds or one second so this is gonna be the up ramp so this is not nearly fast enough this is just to have one second to the up and we're gonna have to have twice as fast if we want to have one half a second up and half a second down so it's gonna be 125 so this is gonna be just the up part and the down part is gonna be the same just here oh wow this is bad okay here we're gonna have i equals 4095 and it's gonna be larger or equal to zero so it's gonna go back to zero and then every time we're gonna decrease it by one so this is gonna go up and this is gonna go down again a little bit more over here and this should take half a second and this should have half a second go back now in order to see if we did correctly and uh, before when I was testing a few months ago and I gave up is because nothing was writing into the register because when I was reading back the register the value was always zero to do that there's a function called get data output value which reads the value from the data register of the DAC so let's execute it right after here and we're gonna go the channel with channel one uh, here it is so we're gonna read data from the channel one and we're gonna put it in the variable k so we can uh, watch the variable k in the uh, variable watch i screw it up it's a large k instead of a small k oops we have something like that this should be good no problems and this should be it everything set also microseconds i said it's milliseconds that's because i'm only dividing by thousand here so we have to divide by a million and also this is gonna receive microseconds and let's just change this so it will be obvious to you when you see this code and uh, this is gonna create microseconds great and i'm also always uh, resetting this to zero and uh, we're not going to use ticks after that so 
great this is it and let's try it let's compile it save and compile it says two warnings but these are some definition uh, warnings and the variable k is not set it's set but not used but we're going to use it just to watch it so it is okay my microcontroller is plugged in and i see i don't have the upload buttons where the hell are they let's go shot perspective uh, debug yes we want to debug it Okay, this is very strange. Where are my settings? They were here just before. Let's open my debug perspective. Okay, this is better. So here it is, debug configuration. I have JLink configuration over here and the AC6 one over here. And we're gonna run this one. Everything is configured. Yes, uh, SWO is configured. This is configured as well. This looks fine, so let's debug it. So you're gonna see, and there's an error. SWO port launching command undefined path. Oh, okay, yeah, I found the button. The J link has initialized, and let's get rid of this. We don't need it, we only need to watch the variables. So let's run until over here, control R. The both values are at zero. So let's go set data. Both are i and go back. And i is one. It's gonna be one. And if you read it, yes, the value has been written correctly. So if we run until here, it's gonna be half a second. And the value i was 4096 and the k was at 4095. So this should be working. So in order to, to check it visually, let's go down to the oscilloscope and let's see how it works. Hello guys, welcome back to my workshop. So here's the development board with the oscilloscope probe, probe to PA4, if we can go closer. Oh yes, so this is the PA5 is on the bottom one and the PA4 is the one that's being probed right now. The board is powered via external power supply and if we go up to my oscilloscope, we can see a few different things. So here's the signal, it's the ramp going up and down. You can see it's writing it like this. And the frequency is just under 1 hertz, which is logical because we're only, uh, in our calculations, we're relying that the pulses were going to 4000, not to 4095. So that's the difference. And the voltage peak to peak is 2.86 volts. So this is from bottom to the upper. So the supply for this CPU is 3 volts. And yeah, here it is. Here's the our DAC output. This is no PWM. This is pure waveform out from our development board. So I hope you like this video. And I have a few ideas for the next one. So we'll see each other in the next one. Bye.